Morning. Uh, today, uh, Thomas and I thought I would give you a little talk on rhododendrons, and uh, they're not too popular now. Uh, when I was in college in the ancient times of the 50s, rhododendrons were a great plant. Uh, right behind me up here in the St. Francis Wood, Forest Hill, Everybody had rhododendrons. Golden Gate Park was full of rhododendrons. And over the years, for some reason, they went out of vogue. Um, nurseries used to have big sections of, of rhododendrons. And uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, we have one here, and it's in very good shape. And this particular one, and there's a few others, and you can see by the trunks, they're very old. These came out of one of my jobs in about 1980. And then we moved them over here because they were too big for the front of this garden. And I've always kind of liked them. They're very easy to maintain. Bad part is they bloom once a year. But when they bloom, they're spectacular, you know. And in fact, in Golden Gate Park, they had a grove called the rhododendron grove. And uh, it was one of our students took care of it when he got to be a city gardener. So anyway, when I wanted to show you that what the rhododendrons look like, and you can see them behind me, but these right here is, would be the flower bud. Okay, there's one there, and then there's another one right here. But then... Um, and these would be blooming. We cut this off to show you, but you would never prune them at this time of the year, okay? Right here is last year's bloom. And usually we snap those off if you're gonna really maintain your rhododendrons. And uh, as soon as the flowers are gone, you just snap it off. And if you snap it off sooner, the new growth is, will come out sooner and the buds will be a little bit bigger instead of having this old old thing in here. Then if you turn it around, these will never be flower buds this year. They're too small. They're probably going to be for next year. So these here will probably bloom next year, but this one won't. This one won't. The ones that bloom this year won't bloom next year. So that's why rhododendrons have big sections of each plant would be in bloom and part of it it's not that like a, a rose or some other plants that when they bloom they all bloom every branch blooms rhododendrons don't do that and you might be looking here I want to let you know you see this silver cast on the rhododendron leaf they should look like this nice and green where you have this this is thrip damage and this is what the back looks like. So when you have thrip, they're sucking insects. And uh, until we had in the uh, 70s, we had our first big drought. And that's when thrip came about. I had never seen it before. And we had an ag inspector teaching here. And I brought him a couple leaves, a PhD in, in uh, entomology and everything. And I showed him this, he didn't know what it was. So I thought, oh, some new disease. Well, one day, because I had a spray license at the time, and I got a call from a young man, and he wanted me to come and do some spraying for, me, for him, and he said he was a gardener. So I drive out, and here this long-haired hippie comes out. And uh, he has his Volkswagen bus, and uh, he, he wanted me to do some spraying on this job for him. And I, uh, he says, because I have thrip. And he showed me leaves like this. And I said, oh, how do you know it's thrip? Oh, he says, that's classic. That's a classic example. And he runs over to his bus and he pulls out a couple books and shows them to me. And I said, holy cow, the inspector, ag inspector can't tell and I got to learn from a hippie, you know? So I want you to know, you could learn from many people. Do not 
think this person or that person. I've learned a lot from clients. So when you have this, you and you can see there are some branches down in here. All these are clean. Some of the lower branches right here, they're silvery. And that and so what we use now instead of uh, spray material, you can use beneficial nematodes. You put them in the ground and these beneficial nematodes eat the larva in the ground. So you never make it up to work on, on your bush. So you may have to do a little bit of spraying to get the ones that are up here. But if you really want to stop them, you got to stop them down in the ground. Okay, and Thomas will sh probably show you, or Malcolm at another time. They're so tiny you don't see them. You know, so you take a, a like these nematodes. They, they give you a. It's like magic. The, these guys do it, and you look. There's nothing there. You're paying for them. Okay, but anyway, getting back to pruning, you probably all know nodal regions of plants and. Here's a node, here's a node. So on the new growth, you could see these nodal regions. So you could prune right above it, right above that one, then it will branch out right there. But as you get further down, sometimes it's hard to spot them. But right here, you could even see the buds. So if I wanted to prune this and wanted to make sure I, I could prune properly, you could take this off. Mm. Then this, will make a cluster like this. It will, it will push out about four branches. Because if you could look real close here, there's one, two, there's a whole pile of all the way around. So you'll get a whole cluster coming out. And then they'll be up. So you've reduced the size of the plant. But what you must learn on rhododendron, don't prune every branch. You'd have no flowers for four or five years. So if you take this branch off and maybe another one, maybe for that year, if you're trying to reduce the height, that's enough. Then you wait a year or two and pick some other branches and little by little. A good example of that is I've been working on this one. This one had no branches down in here. This was not here three, four years ago. They were all branches like this, all at the top from, from here up from here down nothing and it looked kind of wrong to me it, you know you tree trunks and rhododendrons you can see it could bloom right down here you got the little buds on them and so on so anyway you could see I could use my cane here probably and point a little bit right up here we prune the top out and it produce these branches okay and right here there must have been some other branches and one here and then there was one here we cut that off so little by little and then uh, we do get blooms one two three you could count them but then like I told you before these do not bloom now maybe these will bloom next year okay so Gus, you're saying it's like a gradual process of bushing it out, yeah, so to yeah. speak. It's not like a rose where you could prune everything and start over. Rhododendrons, you can't. So I've got to tell you one story about pruning of rhododendron. I just came out of a lecture uh, when I first started my business. And I started pruning this lady's rhododendrons. She came out and fired me. She says, Everybody knows you don't prune rhododendrons. Well, that was an old wives' tale. I want you to know there's no such thing as do not prune any plant. But, you know, there were these stories. And so this is why all these rhododendrons had tops on them and no bottom, because nobody ever pruned them. So I don't know where that got started. But, you know, uh, so anyway, I, I changed a lot of that wherever I worked, wherever I gave a, you know, you go to see a client, you may not get the job, but you uh, give them a little knowledge and a little of your knowledge. So uh, a good example now, if, if I was going to do this, want to reduce the height of this plant. Let's see, I have here.
so you, on this one you got all these side branches so you could prune that right out you prune that out and then if you, you wanted to you could prune this one this will branch out there and it, it shortened the plant made it stockier and when you cut the terminal you force other growth so these here will grow better and maybe down in here it will sprout also mm. you don't know but the, the the buds are there i have taken rhododendrons and cut them about eight inches off the ground and in five years i had a nice bush but you have to live through looking at a stump mm. you know a lot of people so you have to do if you're going to do this kind of pruning to rejuvenate a plant you better talk to your client first you know they had an eight foot plant and now they got a stub that's eight inches and you got to explain it and they're willing to wait um, it seems like um, in our business a lot of people that have gardens uh, take care of their own garden and as they get older they can't do it all so they hire a gardener mm. okay well the older they get they want results they don't want to wait here here you got the young gardener and he says oh well in 10 years it'll be beautiful they say oh, in 10 years i'll be dead you know so they they sometime they won't let you do this kind of pruning because they figure five years i won't be around to mm. see it so you have to think in practical terms you know uh, client is always the boss like i said they said uh, you don't prune rhododendrons if that's the way they are hey you can walk away but otherwise you do what they say they pay the bill mm. you know and sometime uh, i remember my dad being fired on a job because the lady wanted him to plant baby tears my father was ripping baby tears out of almost every garden he worked at and he hated it and so he wanted to get rid of that okay so anyway um this gives you an idea but i i really want to like right here too you could see these are the nodal regions here and the buds will pop out from there so you're pruning back to bare wood gus yeah. on some of these branches yeah. no yeah. problems comes yeah. right out yeah uh and the other thing is before we close i hope we got enough time when you prune is the most important part and that should be right after bloom then you prune and that way it's growing back out again mm. okay so it'll, next time we get together i'll explain that a little bit more okay bye-bye